Well, with the inauguration just eight days away, President-elect Joe Biden shifting his focus to the coronavirus vaccination efforts. President-elect receiving his second dose on Monday and now plans for mass vaccination sites rolling out all across the country. Joining us with more on the vaccination efforts, NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar. Dr. Natalie, good to see you this morning. Two. All right. Well, hi there. Hi. Well, it seems like every state has their own guidelines as we move into their next phase. So how do people know across the country in their individual states when they're going to be eligible? Well, Al, yes, as you mentioned, it certainly has been confusing, even a little bit chaotic. I don't think that that would be an understatement. Um, you know, I think there's at least four different factors at play here. Uh, one is that uh, when you are up for a vaccine or when you will get a vaccine depends on where you live. It depends on where you are on the priority list. Uh, it depends on supply and it depends on distribution. The state guidelines are very fluid. They're changing a lot uh, every single day, really. Um, and also states have sometimes decentralized control even at the to the local level. So it's become really almost labyrinthine. What we're seeing um, and what I think we'll continue to see more of uh, are big convention centers, stadiums, for example, being transformed into vaccine administration sites. For example, in New York, the Javits Center, SUNY and CUNY campuses will be used for this California Dodger Stadium, for example. I think in the meantime, um, if you're a teacher, you contact your teacher's union. Um, you can certainly contact your employer. You can contact your doctor. We may not always have the answer. For example, in less than an hour, we'll be having a big town hall here where we're going to learn more about when allocation to our patients uh, really can begin uh, in earnest. Mm. Dr. Natalie, so many of us try to boost our immune system, especially during the winter months. And during the pandemic, we actually saw a spike in vitamin D sales. Is there any evidence at all that shows supplements like this could help fight COVID? Well, you know, I think let me start by just a note on why we're even talking about vitamin D. We've known, of course, that it's important for your bone health, but it also plays a role in your immune function in mm. two specific ways. One is that it can directly protect you against bugs or pathogens, but it also can dampen and modulate that inflammatory response when we talk about that cytokine storm. So that's certainly why it's of interest. Where we are right now is that there is a lot of emerging research that does suggest a connection between vitamin D and COVID-19, but experts say there's not sufficient evidence yet at this point to recommend vitamin D as either a treatment or a prevention. What I would say to folks as a take home is that if you are are deficient and you're taking vitamin D, certainly continue your supplement. Mm -hmm. If you're curious to know what your vitamin D level is, you should ask your doctor for a blood level and supplement if you're deficient. That's a good response. Japanese health officials also said on Sunday, now another variant of the coronavirus had been detected in travelers coming from Brazil. This is in addition, of course, to the strains we've talked with you about found in the UK and South Africa. Should people be concerned? So, you know, a, a point about mutations, and I know we've said this a lot, is that they are common, uh, not unusual at all, very much expected with viruses of this type. But whether or not they actually result in what's called a functional difference or an impact, a term that Dr. Fauci likes to use, a.k.a. are they does it make the virus more transmissible or, or able to produce more severe disease? That's the real question. We have limited information right now on these on this Japanese variant uh, per the their infectious disease uh, society. There are some genetic mutations that are similar to the ones that are found in the UK and the South African variant, which would theoretically make it more transmissible. All mutations are important, but whether or not this one actually has any clinical significance is yet to be determined.